because so we're on facebook live this is ccc tv the ccc3 right we're listening to pastor sam cologne who's our lead pastor i figure why not use pastor sam why use some other music and we could use his and um we're going through romans we're going to be going through romans chapter two today and i am in i'm with um pastor rick don't let uh the name fool you it's pastor rick not henry we call him pastor rick. that's my government name <laughs> <laughs> and we are here with also darby paris amen, amen. and uh, we are from circle of christ church amen wednesday's bible study happy um saint patrick's day um mm -hmm. pastor you were saying something about um Yeah, and uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you clear. I hope you can. Uh, so, yeah, I just came across something very interesting today, uh, and it's that uh, we kind of have it all figured out wrong, but um, I think, did I post it? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, anyhow, uh, Ligonier's, uh, Ligonier Ministry actually put uh, put up a, a uh, a post, uh, and you could always look up Ligonier Ministry, and it talks about why why why, why Christ, should Christians celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And they give you a, a, a they break it down, and uh, St. Patrick's St. Patrick uh, wasn't actually canonized by the Catholic Church. He was never canonized, but um, according to the history, he was uh, he 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 planted a church, uh, maybe a few churches, right? And so, um, and uh, in his uh, breastplate, he because he was a, he was also a, a, a military man. Uh, in his breastplate, it said uh, basically something to, to the effect of, you know, don't follow me, uh, follow Jesus. Don't put your eyes on me. Put your eyes on Jesus, and so on. So it's interesting that um, our Irish brothers and sisters they they celebrate him, but there's a lot of uh, folklore, a lot of. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things tie into, and especially when when a person is great, uh, uh, people tend to add a little bit more to, and, and, and you know, they make it bigger than what it really was. But listen, uh, any man that preaches the gospel and plants a church, any man or woman that does that is is great in my eyes and in the eyes of the Lord. You know, so yeah, so St. Patrick. So I, I don't think he would have wanted us to celebrate him the way that, uh, that he is celebrated. celebrated. You know. <laughs> But by all means, you, let me yes. ask you a question. Did did he play basketball for the Celtics though? Uh no, he was he he didn't make it. He didn't make it. Uh, yeah. He didn't make it. Yeah. Oh, just, uh, just he, wondering. He was busy planting, he was busy church planting, so he wasn't able to do it. Inquiring minds want to know, that's why. All right. <laughs> yes. Um so we're we're joined by uh, Mama Olga, um Benji, um Esther Rivera. God bless you all. God um, bless share. everyone. Share, 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 you know, um, hit the like button, smash the like button, share, 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 tell your friends and let them tell their friends and so on and so on. And remember that commercial? I can. Mm -hmm. right. um, so today was a pretty interesting. I, I, uh, uh, I got to go through um, LaGuardia Airport, the new and got lost in, uh, for a, a long time, the mm -hmm. new LaGuardia. It is, uh, it's a maze. Mm -hmm. It's not amazing. It's just a maze. It's a maze. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm so glad that they're doing things to, in, um, to undermine y your, your well being because I have no idea. There's no signs for, um, terminal A until you're next to terminal A. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you got to try and look for it. That, that's the way it goes. Always awful planning, you know? And, and they don't they don't use anybody with common sense to plan the stages. This is just the way it goes with airports. Come in, as soon as you come in, you see, all right, terminal B, C, and D. I was like, they forgot something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So there's no A. Wow. And so we just drove around, drove around, and then finally, oh, all right. And it's way down where the old uh, American Airlines is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow, you know, crazy. So, but hey, I got to see the sights, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
And I hear the terminal is beautiful the way they did it inside. I have no idea. Uh, I was, but uh, um, I always prefer leaving out of America. Um, not American. Um, JFK. It's just mm. easier to get around. You know, it's it's harder to get to. <laughs> I hate. Uh, eh, I think LaGuardia is harder to get to. This no, so it's right there. It's yeah. we're in the Bronx, so it's right there. JFK is like all the way on the other side, like all the way on the other side. Mm -hmm. So um. But if you take the clear island, I always teach cab drivers this and they get surprised. Mm -hmm. If you take the clear island, especially before um, five o'clock, you get to the airport like in 20 minutes from 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 the Bronx. The clear island? You mean the cross island? The cross island, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, this is, that's it, early in the morning. Cross island is great. But mm -hmm. at once uh, seven o'clock roll around until around 11, 12, mm -hmm. it is a parking lot or at least slow moving parking lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's everybody going to Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said it wrong. It's Long Island. That's the way they say it. <laughs> right? You got it, Long Island. Anyone from Long Island, uh, chime in. As we know that's it. And it's if you want a soda and a pizza. <laughs> right? I'm just, I'm just messing with you. But um, uh, yeah, I, I was in Long Island. I was in Long Island, um, Brooklyn. Right? Brooklyn's part of Long Island. Well, there's, what was it, five towns? I know when I was in Queens, when I worked in Queens, there's a section five towns and they consider that part of Long Island. Well, the whole, the, the land mass is called Long Island. Mm -hmm. Many people equate Long Island to be Nassau, Suffolk, but Long Island is actually Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, Suffolk. The land mass mm -hmm. is called Long Island. That's why Long Island City is in Queens. Oh, okay. Because All the right. whole thing is called Long Island. All right. And so, um... I hope everyone is good on uh, Super St. Patrick's Day. Um, so we're waiting for, I know that it's, I can't wait. I was looking at the calendar, uh, the, the, the weather. It's like 50s for the rest of the time until it becomes 60s. And then after that, you know, it's just, it's not going to be cold until September. So we've made it. We came out <laughs> of the cold. We went through the snow, even though it, it was snowing last night. Yeah, and they said it might be a slight snow on Friday morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it'll be minor. It'll be minor. Hector Sorry. Ponce is on. Uh, keep uh, Hector Ponce in prayer. He just uh, came out of a surgery. Um, surgery and, um, you know, when they put you under, you come back from, it's great. I remember when I went and got my knee um, surgery, and I just wanted to go home. So I told my wife, listen. I'm just going to lie to them. Just help me out the door so I don't fall on myself. <laughs> Nurse is like, you feel good? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, the whole thing is spinning and everything. I just wanted to leave. I'm sitting on this um, this bed thing that is just metal for about you know half an hour, and I'm going numb. I was like, I can't stay here any longer. I'm going to die on this bed. <laughs> so yeah. went there. My wife drove me home. And I was good. You know? Eileen's on. Hey, God bless you, Eileen. God bless Eileen. All right. Yes, we we got people that in love with the word, you know, in love with the word. Um, what was it? A, a, a speaker once said that um, when you see that um, a, a Sunday service is big, they love the pastor. Everyone mm -hmm. comes. They love the pastor, right? When um, there's a good speaker at the Sunday night service, you know, remember the, they had those, right? Mm -hmm. That means the people and a lot of people show up, they, they really love the speaker. They want to hear the speaker. Right. Um, when a lot of people come to the um, Bible study, th th those are the ones that love the word. The one. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the one that a lot of people don't go to. The prayer service. Uh. <laughs> so the speaker was like the ones that go to the prayer service. Those are the ones that love God. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. <laughs> Conviction. Right. Yeah. It's true. It's the same like with visuals. Yeah. You know, usually it'd be only like maybe a handful that go to a visual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My wife give me stories about Guyana where the, like the whole town is there in an overnight prayer vigil. Mm -hmm. and they're leaving like five o'clock in the morning and all. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Everyone at that time is like the silver surfer. They're just flying <laughs> after the service home because they're like, ah, yeah. on top of the world. And that's that's rare in between you hear that nowadays. Now you'll hear a vigil and it'll be like maybe two in the morning, three in the morning. But yeah. it's, it's rare. Well, very. I, I've only been to one vigil. I'm, I'm, 
told you I, I was not brought up in church. Went to one vigil and it was like lights out, twelve o'clock. We gotta go. <laughs> My wife was like, "What, what vigil is this?" <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I remember, uh, and, and I miss these days with the youth. Because remember, I came into the Lord at thirty-two, and I was considered a young adult. Mm. And um, we used to do visuals, and it'd be all night, all night. And then in the morning, we didn't want to stop being around each other, so we would go to IHOP and again go <laughs> back to the church and go pray again and and stay together. So, you know, that those were beautiful times, you know, it, it's sadly missed because I see the youth of today is not as connected. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of distractions. Oh, yeah, a lot of distractions. Back then, there was no Instagram. There was no, you know, as much. I think there was Facebook, but it wasn't as big as it is now. Well, you know? so, I, I want to say, but first I want to say uh, hi, Neil. He says happy hamburger patties day. Right. I'm, I'm <laughs> still waiting for my up. burger. I'm still waiting for and, and Susanna, she likes my hat. Amen. Yes, that's right. Go Celtics. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, this <laughs> is uh I am uh I'm a little part of everything. I'm a little uh Germanic, I'm a little Jamaican, I'm a little Scottish, I'm a little Irish. I think um my because there's a, a cousin who goes through the ancestry. I think she said that we're from the tribe of um Levi too. <laughs> Everyone is right. Why is it? Yeah. Everyone's from the tribe of Levi. It, you never, you ever notice they're not from Dan, right? Mm -hmm. right like, nobody wants to be from Dan. <laughs> no one wants to be from Dan. <laughs> they're excluded, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of distractions. I remember the days when I was the remote control for the TV. You know, <laughs> you know, you you're playing in the living room and you hear, yeah. hey, Jay, and I, you run over, oh, change the channel, change the two, no, oh, change yeah. the five, no, change back to two. What's on four? Now change back to two. Fix the antenna. No, not like that. What was on seven again? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> click, 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 click. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? Click, 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 yeah. click. Uh... And, and, and in a Spanish household, you couldn't do the the click. What did you? Oh do? no, no. It had to be <laughs> click, click, yeah. click. You couldn't go. <laughs> no way. Right? You get one of those stairs, like oh, and it, like like Clint Eastwood. Yeah. And she's right there yeah. with the chancleta, like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? My my grandmother, when she ran out of the slippers, she would grab the brush. You know those ivory brushes. Yeah. Nice. Those guys, I and those things, those are things are heavy, man. Then, yeah. You yeah. know, just like. <laughs> <laughs> you like, oh. what is it? You you're like the doing... Matrix. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. You start doing the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have yeah. fun, you know. Oh yeah, go on, Pastor. What? No, I'm just agreeing. It was it was a different time. Oh, yeah. uh, I, but I'll tell you something. You 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 know you caught it because I'm thinking to myself. So how do we do ministry in an age like today? You know, how do we do ministry? Uh you know, I try, you know, I'm old school. You know, I've been at this for many years. Uh, and I've seen the changes, you know, I've seen the changes. But um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is tried and true. Mm -hmm. And it uh, and it transcends uh, the ages, you know. And uh, the message is still relevant. It's still, uh, it still impacts Sorry. people's lives. Sorry. And... <laughs> and um yeah, yeah. and it really um it, 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 you know the, the when it, when the gospel comes to a person's life it's gonna make a difference it's gonna it's gonna make a difference you know um it's gonna it's gonna change your life it's gonna you know you know talking about being woke mm -hmm. yeah you know uh the gospel woke you i don't know if i'm saying that right oh, yeah. i'm trying to well, you know, it's funny. The first time I, the first person I believe that really became woke was um, Lazarus. <laughs> good one. Good one. Right? Good one. That's right. That's right. Lazarus, yeah, like come forth. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, yes <laughs> you know? But this is the message that we need today. And I'll say this because last night we had a great meeting uh, with the Menda. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's oh, yeah. always a great meeting. It's always a great meeting. But um, if we don't get into the nitty gritty, <clears throat> that's right uh, you know we, we're you know we're just gonna be mediocre christians mm -hmm. yeah. you know uh, you know because there's so much here there is and it, and it makes a difference you know it i, think, I think it was i think it was dl moody that said that um it, the the word or the gospel i can't remember exactly is so shallow that a a, a toddler could 
mm-hmm. um, waddle in, right? Mm-hmm. But it's mm-hmm. so deep that it take a scholar, you know, mm-hmm. yes, lifetimes times yes. to mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. engulf. You know, I'm pro- you know, you look, you, you, I don't and, and you and you and you look at the story of the creation. Everybody's pulling their hair, you know, trying to figure this out. You know, uh, the Big Bang theory. You know, evolution. Listen, the story of the creation is so easy and simple to understand. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, God created. Mm-hmm. And you tell this story to a baby, a little kid, and they'll remember it. God created the heavens. He created the earth. He created the fish, the animals. He created man, Adam. Eve, and there was a beautiful family afterwards. You know, I mean, you know, it changes a little bit. But the essence of the message is yeah. simple. It's simple. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, and I think that, that God gives it to Moses, well, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit gives us to us. Let's go like this. I'll say it like that. Uh, In a way that we could understand it. Mm -hmm. But then we become, I guess, uh, too grown. We we become more at like, um, and uh, we're going to start right after this, but Mm -hmm. um, we're so, as moderns, we're analytical. We want to analyze and says, all right, we want Mm -hmm. every detail. When God was not Mm -hmm. about giving you every detail, but giving you the the overwhelming story it mm-hmm. is a story mm-hmm. and when jesus mm-hmm. came what did he do he told stories mm-hmm. because um data people forget mm-hmm. but stories people remember mm-hmm. yes, yes right yes. Mm-hmm. right um so that's the best way to convey truth yes in the mm-hmm. ancient society they mm-hmm. would convey mm-hmm. the truth through story because mm-hmm. people were going to remember it and it was a first a oracle oral tradition trans yes. you know that's how they mm-hmm. um continued to transmit the 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 truth was Amen. orally until moses came along and i uh, started mm-hmm. writing it down mm-hmm. so, um, and it it was you know it it was different than anything else you look at the creation stories that creation that everything was made for the gods Man was the slave for the God. Man was made to serve the gods, mm-hmm. right? And all of them, uh, uh, um, you know, the Babylonian, um, the Sumerian, um, whichever, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, creation events. And it was done in one day, right? Mm-hmm. And it was, boom, it was done. And there's mm-hmm. usually some turmoil um, that one God had to defeat another God, mm-hmm. the chaos mm-hmm. God, like Baal, he had to, defeat tet the the chaos god right and then he became the god under l and and whatever but god he says no 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 um i'm gonna create everything and it's for mankind mind-blowing mm-hmm. it's different and not only mm-hmm. that but i'm making it in seven seven is going to be complete and guess what you get a day off mm-hmm. we take that stuff for granted oh yeah mm-hmm. i need my two days off well mm-hmm. that didn't happen back in the day during romans mm-hmm. All the Romans looked at um, the Christians and the and the Jewish uh, um, religion as lazy. You don't work every day. You're lazy. Mm-hmm. You know, what kind of and Christians was known as um, atheists because they didn't believe in the gods. Christians were the atheists. Mm-hmm. So read what Polycarp wrote to uh, his letter right um, before he was um, martyred. He said, you call me an atheist, you're the atheist. And they were, they, they tried to, you know, they killed him. So, so things haven't changed much. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know. um, so what we're going to do now is, I guess we're going to um, make a joyful noise. So we're going to open up in prayer. Uh, Pastor Rick, you want to open us up in a uh, quick prayer? Sure, sure, sure. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, this evening. We thank you, Lord, that we can meet through this uh Facebook, Lord, uh, and Lord, uh, you're reaching lives, Lord. You're reaching lives and you're saving lives, Lord. You're reconfirming, Lord, uh, lives as well, Lord, and we thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that we can share this beautiful story, Lord, um, and talk about uh, the book of Romans tonight. Father, bless uh, Darby and Nature, Lord, and bless us all, Lord, so we can be faithful, Lord, to this word, Lord, and share it, Lord, and that it may uh, uh, clarify so many things, Lord, that need to be clarified Lord, tonight. Lord, if someone's listening tonight that doesn't know you, Lord, that let them, Lord, before this night is over, Lord, let them come to a, a salvation knowledge of Christ, Lord, and if anyone needs healing, Lord, we proclaim healing tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. 
I thank you for this evening, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So I'm going to do my uh, version of uh, yes. Pastor Sam. Not as good. I'm not a, a he's the original. I'm the, the bootleg. But um, <laughs> I'll do my best. Amen. All right. So um, how, how's my sound? How did it sound? It sounds sound? good. Sounds like a guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did one of your moves, Rich. <laughs> yeah, know, right? <laughs> um, so we're going to. Um, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you or evil victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, one working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, one working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power. Break every chain. 
Thank you, Lord God. We dedicate this time to you, Lord. I pray everyone listening, Lord God, that they would come to you and just praise you now, Lord God, for all you've done for us. You've seen us through COVID, Lord. We're not out of it yet, Lord, but we know we are confident in you, Lord God, that you are faithful to us, Lord God. And you said you've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging bread, Lord. It is you and your grace and your glory that it keep us, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, he's worthy. Yes. He yes, is he is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Yo, I was I was starting churches now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. 
What? what is it? If you can't go to church, we'll bring church to you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We deliver. Yes. We deliver. Yeah, we in during the outreach, we, we brought the church Lord. to them definitely. We went Amen. out. Amen. We um made sure that they knew the love of Christ. Um, you know. Amen. And that's what Amen. and that's why I love people like uh Mama Olga, who mm -hmm. goes out and she anywhere possible, she's gonna make sure that you know about Jesus. Amen. <laughs> you know, she's Amen. gonna make sure. You gotta love Amen. her, right? Amen. I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to Amen. emulate, like Paul said, emulate me. I'm trying to emulate the things that people do that are good. Hey, brother Amen. Gary's on. God, God bless, bless Gary. Amen. Yes, Gary. Big shout out to Gary. Yeah. What yeah, is it? Yeah. It doesn't take much. We don't have to um, minister to a group. We could just minister to individuals. And it, all Amen. it takes is us imitating Christ. That's what Amen. It Amen. Right. Well, listen, I'm going to go to one of my heroes, Martin Luther. I know that. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I, mean, I think it was Martin Luther. It says uh, uh, the city is my pulpit. The, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was Luther, yeah. Right, right. I mean, yeah. Wherever we're at, right? That's our pulpit. Mm -hmm. yes. And now you have um, Movement Day and Pastor Tim Keller that says mm -hmm. that in a city, you don't have to actually go out as a missionary and fly somewhere. You can mm -hmm. minister to someone in a city and reach out to mass countries because that's true. Cities are very international. And we see that also in the in the New Testament as well. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Traveled all over and how the gospel spread. And the same thing mm -hmm. can happen in a city like New York City that you have Amen. people from all over the world that come visit New York City. So if you minister to Amen. one person, you may be ministering to that household when they go back home. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes. Yeah, because that's what Paul did in in Ephesus, right? Mm -hmm. He stayed there what a, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, ministered in the house of Tyrannus, right? Mm -hmm. And he just gave uh, you know talked about Jesus and and what scholars believe is from there. That's where mm -hmm. Laodicea mm -hmm. and uh, Colossae mm -hmm. um, got mm -hmm. the gospel and Smyrna, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. most likely. Um, who yeah. knows? <laughs> you know, people, spend, you know, institutions spend so much time trying to change somebody. You know, uh, uh, the penal system tries to change somebody. And I mean, and just one drop of this blood. <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Just one drop of this blood. Amen. Mm -hmm. can just go ahead, like, go ahead, It's like the Come guy I was, I was saying last night that, um, you know, Jesus, either Jesus is God or we're only one person he could have been sacrificed for. So there's a life for a life. So either mm -hmm. Jesus was eternal, right? And mm -hmm. um, his, his life is infinitesimal worthy, right? And he, that means he can die for, you know, all of mankind Amen. and Amen. cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? Because he was innocent. Otherwise, he could only do it for one person. Right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and I that's feel why, you, bro. Yeah, I mean, Amen. when it comes to the deity of Jesus, that's that's Amen. my stopping point, you know. But let's uh, transition. So we went through chapter one, and we're going through chapter two. I, I want to read this uh, quick statement. This is by uh, James Edwards, um, understanding the Bible commentary, right? And it says, discussing the discussion of guilt of humanity in um, one eighteen, chapter one of. Romans verse 18 pre presupposes the Gentile world that that is humanity without special revelation from God. The preeminence given to homosexuality in um, chapter one, verses 26 and 27, and the list of vices in 29 and 31 typify Jewish prejudice against Gentile sinners, as Paul once referred to them in Galatians uh 215 you can write this down if you want or go back and rewind um we noted um how clearly um the end of chapter one echoes the jewish indictment of gentiles from the wisdom of solomon which is uh, uh apocrypha writing right um but the paul was very you know this is one of the things that he he knew of and well read right just like today if we would you know if someone says, yeah, you got to get rid of that stinking thinking, we would know that, oh, that's Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Not an advocate of Joyce Meyer, but I did like that book. Um, <laughs> right? Um, Gentiles could have known God from creation, 
They lived among his works, says um, Wisdom of Solomon, yet they did not recognize the craftsman while paying heed to his works. Therefore, they are not to be excused, for they had the power to know so much, yet failed to find sooner the Lord of these things. For these reasons, they became hateful to God because of their confusion over what is good and forgetfulness for 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 forget forgetfulness yeah of god's favors their idolatry led to sexual perversion and they were forced to learn that one is punished by the very things by which he sins these quotations and ideas are from the wisdom of solomon and i find a striking parallel to paul's expose of gentile guilt in the last chapter of romans i say this because paul is forming a argument right um he when he's coming to rome let's do a real quick synopsis he's he's um coming there in in chains right from um israel and he wants to have a um you know talk to the have the the emperor rule on his uh if he's going to go free or not. And Paul, um, you know, he, he wanted to go to Romans before and then go on to, um, to uh, Spain. This letter was written before he's in chains. All right. So he's telling them that he's, he wants to stop by there. He understands that there's a dispute because of, like we said, that now um, Jews are coming back to the churches that they started and Christians Jew, uh, gentile christians are running them so there's a you know problem there the gentile christians they're they're uh, elitist right most likely they're like oh you know we are, we have culture we're greeks we speak this language you're you know you're you're not greek <laughs> right and the jews are like we're the covenant people you know and they they have a bias so they both have biases against each other and mm -hmm. they're in the church wow mm -hmm. that doesn't happen today though thank god um, mm -hmm. i'm being sarcastic and um <laughs> So Paul is coming to, to talk about this letter is to show them what the gospel is, right? But also he's talking to them. He's talking to the Jews and the Gentiles. And he's showing the Gentiles, listen, this is where you come from, right? You don't know about God. The, the, the oracles of God was not given to you. But now he's going to pivot, right? And he's going to focus uh, from the wickedness of the pagan world. Now he's going to turn to the failures of the covenant people. Right, in order to demonstrate that Israel too shows the symptoms of sin and is thus symptom symptom susceptible to divine judgment. Right. So um anyone want to read um verses one to four? Sure, I I got it. Um I'm reading it in the ESV in the name oh, of the Father. Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. So uh, also remember that Caligula, Gaius, Caligula, and the very famous name, right? Very <laughs> You know, uh, he was not a Christian. Let's just put it that way. We know the his his name is synonymous with you know sexual perversion, right? And that was the one that cast out the Jews. And then he, when he died, they came back. And now, um, uh, I think during now or close to now, either when he writes this or soon after, Nero, another very perverted person, is who is going to be emperor. So this is that time. We think about people like, you know, you know, you can Cuomo, Trump, whoever, you know, um, Biden, Jane, what was his name? James Edwards, uh, Clinton. They had nothing on Caligula and Nero. All right. <laughs> if the church grew during that time, I think that we need to just concentrate on Jesus and proclaiming who he is, you Amen. know, Amen. Right, so. So uh, Romans chapter two, verses one through four. Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on another, you can condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Amen. Right. A lot of people, um, I was watching something and they were like, um, it was about the, you know, we're reading through the Bible, right? 
and I just I'm way behind. Right? I, I I'm just starting Joshua. Um, Olga is already. She told me she was in Judges, I think, right? Or no, in Samuel now. She finished Judges already, right? But the reading <laughs> course is like in, in coming to the end of uh, of um, Joshua. So I'm I'm reading Joshua. I'm I'm reading it in um, this guy's uh, um, who's that? Um, Robert Alter, his version, right? Because I usually read it through the ESV. I wanted to break it up a little bit, be a little crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Um, I, you know, they, God's grace, we miss it sometimes, right? Like it says here that his kindness and his forbearance and pace, patience, right? Not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. How long did he give the Canaanites? Over 400 years. Mm -hmm. Did they come to repentance? No. And uh, guess what? He, he's, there's a judgment on this world right now. Um, I'm just going to speak about America or New York because that's where I'm from. Guess what? Um, we are not doing what is right in the right eyes of the Lord. We're doing what is right in our own eyes. It's like judges all over again. And they did what was right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I, I don't think that America or New York or the world is ever going to go and become, you know, the, the millennium and Christ going to come back and say, Hey, you guys did a good job. Let's just set up shop. I believe that there is darkness and we got to call people out of darkness. That's why we do this. Mm -hmm. We do this to give um, uh, everyone watching a better understanding of what Romans is about. And it is the, the most thorough um, letter about the gospel, right? That everyone, right? There is none righteous, no, not one. For the wages of sin is death. It's quoted on and on and on, right? But it also says that God loved us so much that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So there's grace in there. There's judgment, but there's grace. So let's let's jump into it. What is sin? All right, we we got somebody in um in, in uh, going to seminary school, Brother Gary, right? Um, what is sin? We have a pastor with us. What is sin? Sin is not good. <laughs> hey, that's that's right, I, and that's it, folks. God bless. We'll be back next week. Now, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, sin is what separates us uh, from God, uh, and uh, and basically, there is a there is a a goal, you know, uh, that we have, and uh, that is uh, uh, to 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 honor and and, and worship God. And when we don't do this, uh, we miss the mark. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, and every, any, all of us, and at one point or another, are going to sin. It's inevitable. But there's a difference between uh, sinning and outright sinning. There's the difference. And uh, sin shows up in many ways and many times you don't realize it. That's why we need to uh, study. And, and this moment that we spend here once a week, and if you uh, turn on, uh, turn on, if you, if you uh, watch the Facebook Live and, 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 and the preaching that takes place on Sunday, um, it'll give you a better understanding, it gives us a better understanding of, of what is it that God requires of us. And one of the things that it requires of us is to uh, 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 live a life uh, worthy of his friendship. Is, does that sound good? Yeah. You know, Sounds live good. a life worthy of his friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not trying to complicate things too much, right? Uh, but yes, um, Romans says that we've all uh, sinned and we all fall short, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is it that what is it that makes, you know, what is it that that causes this, right? What is, you know, how do we get into this? How do we get into this predicament? How's that? How did we get into the predicament that we're in? And and Paul is trying to sort things out for us here because the, the, the Jews thought that they had the upper hand because of their, uh, for lack of a better word, because of their salvation through works, because they thought that if they, they kept the law, which they didn't, but they thought if they if they kept the law, they would uh, they would be pleasing to God. They, they, you know, they 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 uh, they they, they wouldn't uh, be uh, 
exed out by God because they were given the law and, and they were basically, uh, they thought they were, they thought they were predestined for salvation because of the law, because they were people of the law. But uh, it turns out that it was not like that. Paul is talking to everyone here, uh, the Jews as well as the Gentiles. And he's calling the Jews and the Gentiles to, you know, to, to, to account now. I mean, uh, what is it that's, uh, that's, that's separating us from God? Mm. What is it that separates us? So sin, right? The, uh, the outright disregard for God's ways, uh, what God requires of us, uh, that's the problem. Missing the mark. Mm. So what is your mark? You know, what, you know, mm. what are you living for? So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to see if it works. <laughs> We're going to find out. This is a um, new new uh, territory. I'm going to see if I can share a Bible project. Uh, mm -hmm. I love Bible projects. So let's. Yes, yes. Oh, this is good. This is going to be good. If it works. Share a sound. Mm -hmm. Share. Go here. Um, what do I do? I go here. Yeah. And. You guys can see it on the screen? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're likely to ta-ta your wit. Most people assume the Bible has a lot to say about how messed up humans are, and that's true. It's also true that the Bible's vocabulary about this topic sounds odd to modern people, using words like sin, iniquity, or transgression. And so the Bible's perspective on the human condition is often ignored or treated as ancient and backwards. This is really unfortunate because through these words, the biblical authors are offering us a deeply profound diagnosis of human nature. Iniquity describes behavior that's crooked, while transgression refers to breaking trust. And sin, this is actually the most common of these bad words in the Bible. So let's focus on it for a few minutes. Sin translates the Hebrew word chata and the Greek word hamartia. The most basic meaning of sin isn't religious at all. Chata simply means to fail or miss the goal. Like when the Israelite tribe of Benjamin trained a small army of slingshot experts, they could sling a stone at a hare and not chata, that is, fail or miss. Or there's a biblical proverb that warns against making hasty decisions because you're likely to chata your way, miss your destination. So in the Bible, sin is a failure to fulfill a goal. But what's the goal? Well, on page one of the Bible, we learn that every human is an image of God a sacred being who represents the creator and is worthy of respect. And so in this way of seeing the world, sin is a failure to love God and others by not treating them with the honor they deserve. You can see this idea in the famous code of conduct given to the Israelites, the Ten Commandments. Half of them identify ways you can fail at loving God, and the other half name ways you can fail at loving people. And the fact that both kinds of failure are combined shows that failing to honor God is deeply connected to failing to honor people. This is why in the Bible, sin against people is sin against God. Like when Joseph refuses to sleep with the wife of Potiphar, he says, how could I sin against God? In Joseph's mind, failing to honor a human made in God's image is a failure to love God. And so sin is a failure to be truly human, but there's more. A fascinating thing about sin in the Bible is that most of the time that people are failing, they either don't know it or even worse, they think they're succeeding. Like when Pharaoh wants to build Egypt's economy and protect national security, in his mind, this justifies enslaving the Israelites. He thinks it's good and he's totally unaware that it's an epic fail. Or when King Saul is chasing David around the wilderness trying to kill him, he thought he was bringing a criminal to justice until he realizes he's the corrupt one. And he says, I have sinned, I am the failure. So sin is about more than just doing bad things. It describes how we easily deceive ourselves and spin illusions to redefine our bad decisions as good ones. So why are humans such bad judges between moral failure and success? Well, the first appearance of the word sin in the Bible offers an insight. There are these two brothers, Cain and Abel. Their parents had just given in to this beastly temptation to redefine good and evil by their own wisdom, and now Cain is faced with a similar choice. He's jealous and angry that God has favored his brother, and so God warns him, if you don't choose what is good, chata is crouching at the door, it wants you but you can rule over it. So in these stories, sin or moral failure is depicted as this wild hungry animal that wants to consume humans. 
And we know how that story ends. The Bible is trying to tell us that failed human behavior, our tendency towards self-deception, it runs deep. It's rooted in our desires and selfish urges that compel us to act for our own benefit at the expense of others. And it leads to this chain reaction of relational breakdown. This is why in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul describes hamartia as a power or a force that rules humans. In his words, we are slaves to sin. He even says sin lives in us so that the things I don't want to do, that's what I do. So with the word sin, the biblical authors are offering a robust description of the human condition. It's a failure to be humans who fully love God and others. It's our inability to judge whether we're succeeding or failing. And it's that deep selfish impulse that drives much of our behavior. This is not a pretty picture of ourselves, but if we're honest, it's realistic. This is why in the Bible, the story of Jesus is such good news. He's depicted as the creator become a truly human one who did not fail to love God and others. That is, he did not sin. And yet, he took responsibility for humanity's history of failure. He lived for others and he died for their sins. And he was raised from the dead to offer them the gift of his life that covers for their failures. Or in the words of the apostles, he committed no sin, Yet he carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to our sins and live to do what is right. And that's the story behind the biblical word for sin. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, even this, uh, Mitch, you there? He's muting. Okay, yeah. And, you know, and even, and oh, even there this, you go. and even this, I just want to say real quick, right, that you would have those to say that Jesus committed sin on our behalf, and that's why he went to hell. That's why this is important that we come at, at least once a week and, and, and sit together and mm -hmm. share and, 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 and break this down. Because all this false doctrine that's out there, mm -hmm. all right, is corrupting people's lives. So you just yeah. can't tune out. You can't tune in to any little show there on TV. Yeah. Or on Facebook. Yeah, it, it's like I said last night in the men's thing. It's it's not a Twitter answer, you know. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I'm convicted of a crime and we go to court, the judge doesn't go. All right, send me the tweet. What is it? All right, I'll do my ruling. No, there's stacks of evidence. There's mm -hmm. tons mm -hmm. of research. There's months of stuff that is done, right? to see if there's a reasonable doubt where whether I should be convicted or or be sent away innocent, right? So same thing. There's stacks of evidence. It's not a tweet. That's why I, I encourage um, people that of uh, believers or non-believers, let's go through this. Let's see yeah. what this is about, you know, because there is so much stuff. And we're going to we'll find out a little bit stuff tonight about the, the wisdom of Solomon. I know most people don't read the Apocrypha or the Deuter Chronicle. Uh, um, I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, uh, writings, but the, um, the people that wrote the New Testament knew these um, these writings just as today, you know, we, uh, I don't know what's the famous uh, what, what is the famous? Oh, uh, um, you know, like I was saying, uh, uh what is that? I read it so long ago. The guy from California, he wrote the book. Uh, um, Rick Warren. What's the name of his book? Oh, um, for the purpose days. life. Sir. Yeah, the purpose yeah. life. Right. Yeah. Right. Something so, like uh, w w you referenced that people like, oh yeah, and they, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not Bible. Should, should the purpose filled life be part of the Bible? No, but does it help you? Do you mm -hmm. it unpack certain things in the Bible? Help you? Yeah. So that's the same thing with these writings. They're not part of the Bible. They're not canonized. They're not inspired, but they're writings to help. Or they could be a little bit off, as Paul will show in, in this. You know, he'll use this. So let's just get into it, right? Um, like we saw, um, he's, changed, he's placing the Jews in the same category that he placed the Gentiles. You're all guilty. <laughs> you got you're without yeah. excuse. Yeah. You have no excuse, old man. He says in verse one, right? And he goes off into a diatribe. And um, for me, who doesn't know what a diatribe is, I had to go look it up. Right. <laughs> so uh, uh, one of the diatribes that Paul uses is quite often in 
Romans, a diatribe usually takes the form of a dialogue using questions and answers to make its point. The writer enter, enters into a discussion with a fictional uh, opponent as a way of advancing his or her own argument. And when I read that, I tried, I, I thought of, because listen, I'm from the Bronx, so my references is always going to be like this. When um, Eminem went in uh, um, uh, Eight Mile and he said what the rapper that was going to battle him was going to say, you know, I do live in a trailer park. I do, you know, so I, so he's he's taking the guy's argument. It's a little different than that, but that's it, it's kind of like that. You're you're basically going, uh, uh, you're taking both spots of the argument. You're saying what this guy says, right? Um, so he says, do you suppose, O oh man, that you will escape the judgment of God? Right? The word uh, um, judgment there appears seven times in some form or, or, the, or the other, right? Between verses one and three. So Paul is really like hitting the nail right there, right? He says, uh, therefore, you have no excuse, O oh man, every one of you who judges, right? For in passing judgment on one another, you condemn yourself. That word is the same thing in the Greek because you, the judge practice the very same things. And we know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, oh man, that you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? <laughs> so Paul's like, judgment judgment seven notice he uses seven on purpose that numbers what is it complete right <laughs> seven is the number of completeness so um you know he indicate he, he's putting this thought this theme right there um there seems to be a wild there was a widely held popular view that jews right that uh, of the jewish nationality um, just being a Jew, that they would um, be exempt from judgment. And where do they get that from? Well, the wisdom of Solomon. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read an excerpt, a couple of them. So um, wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 12, verse 18 to 22. It is in the Apocrypha. Um, Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness and with the Great forbearance, you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Um, through such works, you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. For if you punish with great care and indulgence the el enemies of your servants and those deserving of death, grant them time and opportunity to give up their wickedness, with what strictness you have judged your children to those to whose um, answers ancestors you gave oaths and covenants full of good promises. So while chastening us, you scourge our enemies 10 times, 10,000 times more so that when we, when we judge, we may meditate on your goodness. And when we are judged, we may expect mercy. Right? So, they, they were very self-righteous self looking at the, the, the Gentiles because you don't have the law. We have the law. So God is going to be easy on us, right? So the, But the self-righteous uh, are as cul culpable as the unrighteous for the self-righteous live under an illusion, failing to see that their value judgments of others ultimately condemn themselves. I mean, look, remember David with the lamb? Nathan says, hey, there's a guy... He's got one little you lamb. It's more like a pet and everything. And then his neighbor, he has guests over. And you know what he does? He has, he's very rich. He's got tons of lambs. He doesn't use one of his. He takes the you lamb from his neighbor and cooks mm -hmm. for dinner. He says, what? Uh, murder that guy. That guy's dead. Straight up. Done. He, he says, you are the man. And David was convicted right then and there. Right. But that's what we always ready to convict and judge someone else quickly right i'm uh, i know i do I, I repent lord god i know i do it's true right um but uh so just uh, a side uh oh, side yeah, yeah. note a side note right we should be slow to judge mm -hmm. right 
because one day the the shoe could be on the other foot. Yeah. All right. So we need to have mercy on others because we're going to ask for mercy one day. Mm-hmm. And that's what Jesus, and, the parable, amen. right? His parable. Amen. Go, on, go on, Pastor. Sorry. Amen. So, no, I'm just, so, so this is, this is, you know, it's a timely message because there's a lot of judgment going on. Right? You know, oh, not yeah. judgment, but people are judging others. And I'll, I'll go in as far as the COVID is, is concerned right now. I know that a lot of people's uh, theology was turned upside down at the beginning of this pandemic when we saw pastors and pastors' families and Christians dying because of this plague. And those that would uh, preach that uh, prosperity uh, nonsense, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, I, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I have health, I, I've been blessed and I'm not, what happened? What happened? Okay, this COVID didn't, didn't, read, didn't read that, didn't read, get that memo that it wasn't supposed to attack uh, uh, Christians. Hello. So a lot of people right now are, are, oh, wow. And I thought they were Christians. Let's be careful with that. Yeah. Let's be careful with that one because this has affected everyone. Jew and non-Jew, Christian and not, you know, Puerto Ricans, Blacks, Irish. You know, everybody's getting caught up with this right now. It doesn't matter, uh, but doesn't mean that you're less of a Christian because you got sick with this COVID. Mm-hmm. Please do not let that happen, uh, you know, in your mind. Mm-hmm. Don't let the, the, the mind hustler uh, come in. The yeah, words of uh, brother, brother Wyatt. <laughs> so just be easy on the judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, and it's true. Yeah. Um, one thing I've always said, and, and, I, and people have heard me say, is that we have to spiritually always evaluate ourselves before we even start speaking to someone mm-hmm. about how mm-hmm. they're walking. Um, how are you walking before you start judging how somebody's walking? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and especially during this pandemic, a lot of people um, have taken missteps mm-hmm. and also a lot of people coming to the realization they've been walking crooked for a while and they didn't realize it until this pandemic started. Yeah. Yeah. But that's something that, you know, um, we have to be mindful about judging people because um, we really if we're going to judge anyone, we have to look at ourselves first. It, it's like um, how the word says, um, take the, the, the stick out of your own eye first. Yeah. Yeah. Our phrasing. <laughs> But, um, you know, we can't be so quick to judge someone else without understanding what we're going through ourselves. Right. And and Jesus says, by what measure you judge, you mm-hmm. will be judged. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's accountability. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, um, God judgment on us is based on truth. It's not on opinion. It's not by um, fake news. It's by fact. Right. Um Paul is saying that God would judge every human being in accordance with the actual facts of the case, right? In verse two, he says, we know that the judgment of God falls rightly on those who practice such things, or literally according to the truth against those who practice such things, right? So it's not like God's like, you know, I don't like this one. I'm a judge. You know, uh, that's what we do. (laughs) <laughs> we, you know, I don't like this person, so mm-hmm. I'm going to treat them this way. And that's, you know, that's not like the video, right? We were created to be imagers of God, mm-hmm. right? Adam and Eve were created to image God. They dropped the mantle. Mo, um, Noah, right? Dropped the mantle and his and his uh, um, offspring. Then so God's like, you know what? I'm exiling everyone and I'm starting all over supernaturally all over again. I did supernatural with Adam. I did supernatural with uh, Noah. Now something supernatural. I'm going to have two old people. Um, please don't write me letters or email me. About <laughs> old, right. Um, One seventy-five. I think she was 65. And you know what? It would be a miracle if they had kids. Now I'm going to wait 25 years. How about that? You know, I'm going to wait 25 years, right? And supernatural. And then their offspring dropped the ball, right? Started serving other um, gods, started marginalizing and treating the poor bad. Read the, the prophets. They would pick up whatever they dropped on from the harvest when God said, leave it down there for the poor and the, and the sojourners, the foreigners right? They would pick it up and sweep up every nook and cranny, right? Mm-hmm. Um, against Torah. So it wasn't just, you know, going after other gods, but it was also treating 
the people that are less than you like they're less than you, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and what did God do? He says, all right, I'm going to put you in exile. But my plan is still here. There is always that thread going through line of David and Jesus coming. He says, I am the true imager of God, right? If you see me, you've seen the father. I didn't do anything unless the father tells me. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit that he did everything. He could have came down and says, I'm God in the body. That's it. I'm here. Boom. You know, let me what? Boom. Miracle. Boom. Miracle. Instead, no, he came down and was homeless, suffering, a uh, man of sorrows. Mm-hmm. And he came, defeated death, became king of the universe, resurrected, waiting to come back. And thank God he's waiting because Amen. if he would have came back in 2009, I wouldn't have made the cut. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, I, I want you to come quickly, Lord, but not just yet. L- let me just <laughs> bring some people out of darkness, Lord. I, I, I wasted a bunch of my life, right? Serving myself and let me serve you now. Let's bring people out of darkness. So l- let's go, um, uh, um, family, let's bring people out of darkness, right? Amen. Let's ask God Amen. to help us. To well, I don't like this God. person, so I'm going to treat them this way. That's not me. Oh, that is me. You What's know what going saying? on? So, I'm gonna, you know, Who's that? I, I want you to come quickly, Lord. That's me over here. Sorry. All right. <laughs> bring some people out of darkness. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. We well, have fun well, here, people. A bad repeating. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> there you go. That was that was probably God. Um, or maybe it's just that, you know, whatever. Um yeah, well, go again. Right. sorry about that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, you heard, you heard that part. Get your life right. Maybe you need to bear repeating. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so um and also in the um excuse me, right? Um so God judges, uh, God judges people on the day of wrath, right? It's not with on the outward actions, but the attitude of the heart that will be decisive when he, he brings his wrath, right? And um, the day of wrath is the last day, right? Judgment, the tribulation, the thing that many people don't want to talk about or know. But let's, uh, again, in the wisdom of Solomon, right? Chapter 15, this is echoes this is basically another uh, the, the main mindset here but you O oh god are kind and true and patient and ruling all things in mercy for even if we sin we are yours knowing your power but we will not sin because we know that you are uh, that you acknowledge us as yours for to know you is complete righteousness and to know your power is the root of immortality. So they're just basing on the covenant relationship. It says, Lord, we we're in the covenant, right? You know, oh, and if we sin, you're going to forgive us, right? If we, <laughs> if we treat the, mar- the, the poor and the, and the, 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 you know, the foreigners, the sojourners, in a certain way or if we chase after gods you know we're gonna repent we're gonna come back to the covenant he says no read what i wrote in ezekiel and and um uh you know uh jeremiah um that covenant is over i'm starting a new covenant right mm-hmm. because that covenant's gonna be fulfilled by my servant my servant's gonna come and that's jesus right now i forgot to mention the wisdom of solomon is written probably in the um the what is it the less um, century BC. So one BC, you know, a hundred BC or whatever, somewhere around there. And, um, so Jesus and Paul and all these people knew this is the mindset. We are people of the covenant. So we're good. As long as we're following covenant Torah, right? We are, we have the grace of God. So it's not works based as people thought it is covenant based, but they are there. Uh, they don't realize that the covenant has been broken. They've broken the covenant, and now what has to happen? There has to be someone to pay for it. And God said to Abraham, I will pay the covenant price, right? When he walked through right, right, uh, right. chapter 15. So that's mm-hmm. why the servant had to come and defeat death. Second, God's judgment cannot be avoided through outward identi- identification, right? What the passage reflects is the assumption by the Jews that they are privileged covenant status will put them in such a different category from other people that they don't need to worry about sin. 
Paul insists that mere covenant status will not be enough to shield God's people from judgment. Always, God insists on a heart response to him and a life of obedience reflecting that heart response. What does he say in the prophets? I will take that heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh. I will cleanse you. I will wash you. I will purify you, right? And through the blood of Jesus, we are purified. Jesus says, this is the blood of the covenant, right? This is the new covenant. Mm -hmm. blood of the covenant same exact words that moses said of the old covenant right and he because jesus fulfilled the old covenant to start the new covenant all right um you guys want to say anything no we're good what? we're good all right so the and the, so i want you to ask you um do you think that someone who has more um understanding or knowledge has a greater responsibility to that knowledge Right, than so. someone who's ignorant, mm -hmm. so they are more culpable than mm -hmm. the Gentiles because they have the oracles of God, they mm -hmm. have a relationship <laughs> with the most high, mm -hmm. and most of them studied the, the Torah, so they had knowledge, like like the word says, they were given the law, and at a certain point they lost their way. Um, it became more about status and power than doing the will of God. And we have to be mindful of that because there are churches today doing that. Um, right. There's people who that is all about status and power, meaning that um, how many people are members in their church? Um, do they have a, a radio or TV broadcast? Mm -hmm. And it becomes all about status. Um, this church has a jet, you know, and um, the gospel is lost because it's corrupt. As, as the word says, you know, absolute power could absolutely corrupt. And, um, we see that with, as you mentioned, Caligula and, and Nero, absolute power corrupted them. And um, if we're not careful, that's why if a person decides to become a pastor, they have to humbly desire it. Um, you shouldn't chase after it. That has to be a, a, a divine calling. Um, and there's a lot of pastors out there that have twisted God's word for their stature and power. It has become more about them instead of about the gospel. Um, the gospel is not being brought to the people. Instead, the gospel is being enclosed within the church, within the doors, physically. And that's not the way the Lord intended. Um, people are getting um, settled in their comfort. This pandemic has made us uncomfortable because now it's, we're out of the temple. You know, We're out of the physical structure. The church is not closed. The church is still open. It's just that we're so out. Let me serve you now. Let's bring people out of darkness. So <laughs> let's go. Um, wow. All right. It's all right. <laughs> oh, it's just that way. So I just turned it off, too. It's okay, Pastor Rick. Maybe it needed yeah. very repeating. We no, 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 no. Out of what the is that? Turn the volume all the way down. <laughs> Show it off. This phone is this phone is, is all messed just up. Just turn the vo but, volume all the way down. I just pulled the plug on it. It died. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It may be buried repeating. We need to come out of the darkness. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I really see it as that. You know, yeah, there's no, yeah, no, there's yeah. no coincidences. Maybe yeah, that is true. Because it needs to be heard and it needs to be said. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. We have been in darkness because we got uncomfortable. We got comfortable in the pews. We've taken ownership of pews. We'll be like, this is my chair. Every Sunday, this is where I sit. And um, we're not going out because we just want to sit in our chairs. You want to hear something? I didn't know. I told you, I'm, I wasn't raised in church. There was a time that people paid for their pews and had their names on it. Yes. They still do, down south. Really? Yes. It's a fundraiser because I visit churches yeah. whenever I go on vacation or whenever I traveled for work mm -hmm. when I used to go on assignments. And um, one of the places that I was based at was in Georgia. And in Georgia churches, the way they fundraise is buy a cornerstone when you're building a structure and your name gets put into the stone in the structure of the church and the other is um you buy a pew and then your name is engraved on in bronze on the pew and that's considered your pew um and that's incorrect teaching and it's sad because it, it causes division within the church as well oh yeah. man mm -hmm. it's like yeah. you you got season tickets a uh, box uh, right. Right. or something yeah it's and crazy. mind you, um, I want to add also that was the status that was going on with Hillsong, New York. Um, they were courting off the front area of the church for celebrities, even though some celebrities said they didn't want that to be done for them. 
they wanted to be among the people. Um, Hillsong, um, Carl Lentz, he was quartering off areas because he wanted the status of being among celebrities and they'd be in the front and they could be shown on screen. So wow. this is this is um, the bad yeah, things that was- I'm going, going. Mm -hmm. This is the bad things that was going on that it wasn't sharing the gospels about status and power. He had what he, what he wanted, like celebrities called a green room. And you couldn't talk to him before he preached. He would be in his green room doing whatever he was doing. Could, isn't that exactly what Jesus did before the Sermon on the Mount? It was like, <laughs> listen, Andrew, keep him away. I'm in my green room. I mean, how far away from the gospel yeah, yeah, is that? Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm, not, I'm, I mean, guess what? I, only by the grace of God, hey, I'd probably be puffed up like that too. So I can't even say much, but I know and, Jesus. And, and, and that's why we have to be, be very humble. Um, like some people uh, uh, like to bring up the fact that I do a lot of work in the church. I, I don't speak these things. You guys broadcast it. I don't speak these things. Um, I do it for the glory of God. When I get asked, in fact, I had a, go, a call recently. They asked me, why do you do what I do? And I, I asked, what do you mean? And they said, why is it with all the pain you feel, you still do what you do? It's like it confuses people. And I'm like, because I'm doing the will of the Lord. I'm trying to die to self so I can do the will of God. If I let myself worry about my pain, then I, I'll, I'll be bedridden because I wouldn't get out of bed. I'd be like, I'm in agony. Why am I getting up? But instead, I'm dying to self because I'm saying, I'm not going to focus on me. I'm going to focus on people who need help as well as doing the will of God. God has Amen. caused me to do certain things, and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, Jesus, and I'm sorry not to cut you off, but Jesus uh, comes, he, he didn't consider it anything that, that he was, he was, he's king, that he's Lord of all. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even take that into consideration when he, when he, when he shows up into our, into our history. When he comes down uh, in the form of the child, and he's born and, and enters into our history, he didn't consider, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't use that uh, to say, um, "Here I am, uh, serve me." I mean, is it, that's ultimately what we we, we we will do? But he came to serve, amen. Mm -hmm. And and we cannot forget that. I mean, it's great that we've passed from life. I'm sorry, from death to life because we accepted Christ, you know? And we no longer do the same things that we did before, but that's not a reason for us to, to treat others with disdain. And there are a lot of people that do that, you know? Uh, I, I've been, I'm, I'm clean, I'm, you know, I don't do that anymore. I don't, I don't hang out there anymore. I don't, you know, I don't shoot dope anymore. I don't, you know, I don't sell my body anymore. And they look you down know? on them. And they look mm -hmm. down on those that. that and that's do. exactly, we're going to bring it back. Amen. And that's exactly what Paul was saying to the Jews and the Gentiles here, Jew, the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers, because mm -hmm. in here, right. Um, I'm, I'm reading a great book. It's called reading Romans backwards. So actually, he starts at chapter 16 and he works his way backwards to show you right, what, right. because Paul writes this as everyone knowing what's going on, you know, and then the stuff that's going on, he refers to it after. So he comes in, he, he basically says, Gentiles, look, this is where you are coming from. And, and Jews, you're, you're just as guilty. Right. Because what was going on? You, remember, we told them about Caligula and uh, expelled uh, the Jews and the, the places that the Jews started, right? The Jewish believers, Jewish Christians started. Now, Gentile believers, God fearers or converts now had to take up the mantle and run the church for a couple of years. So now the Jews, are, Jewish believers are coming back like Aquila and Priscilla, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, what's going on? You know, this is where I started. So there's a little thing going on there. And then, mm -hmm. like, well, you got a whole Torah, you know, the, remember what I taught you, we, we still hold adhere to whole Torah. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, actually, we don't have to because uh, God cleaned mm -hmm. everything, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that thing sacrificed to a, um, because back in the day, where you got your meat from was the butcher. And the yeah. butcher was the temple priest, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted meat, you mm -hmm. went to, the, so that's why Jew, you know, the people that Paul said the weak and the strong. So the weak were, these are Paul's words, the mm -hmm. Jewish believers who believe that I can't eat that meat because it was sacrificed to Zeus or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and the, the strong was the ones that said, uh, it doesn't matter. We can eat it anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And so his, his problem with the strong was like, listen, don't be a stumbling block mm-hmm. to the weak. If, if they feel like it's wrong, don't eat meat with them, mm-hmm. you know, eat it on your own. But when you're with them, don't eat meat. So you don't make them stumble <laughs> and, and telling the weak, don't judge the, right. the, the Gentiles for eating the meat and that was <laughs> going on. And, 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 you know, and this is the love of God here that, and don't get me, don't get, don't, don't misinterpret what I'm saying, but our needs, our needs are, 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 are above the law. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, po- you know, our, our, our needs, our well-being. Um, for remember when, when David takes the showbread, right? And he feeds, yeah. His, yeah. His, you know, his men because they were hungry. Yeah. They were hungry. So right there, you know, all bets were off. And, 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 you know, and so there we see the love of God. It's not about, it's not, it's not all about, you know, uh, the show and glitter and, and everything looking all beautiful. You know, hey, listen, these guys have to eat. Uh, so we're going to have to dip into the, yeah. you know, and, and, and feed them. Uh, forget about that. This is consecrated. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point, there's, there's, a, there's a need here. Mm-hmm. And we, we need to, we need to, you know, uh, f- uh, fulfill that need. I would say going back to um, like uh, back in the in Soviet Union, you know, people would be hiding people that the the um, mm-hmm. you know the KGB, KGB was it? looking yeah. for, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so, and they were Christians. So mm-hmm. what do they say? They say is such and such here, and they lie and says no, they're not here. Well, right. how are they lying right. if they're a Christian? Well, it's the greater good because if they gave them right. up and said yeah, they're here, right. th- those people are getting murdered. They're mm-hmm. either being mm-hmm. murdered or sent to Siberia and then getting murdered mm-hmm. or sent to mm-hmm. Siberia and going to die up there anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's a death sentence for giving mm-hmm. them up. So it's a greater mm-hmm. good. And, mm-hmm. But a lot, unfortunately, that's why I don't like legalism. People want, well, mm-hmm. I got to keep it a hundred. Yeah. I got to keep legalism. it a hundred that, you mm-hmm. know, I'm going to tell the truth and God, I'm faithful. They got to have faith in God. This is just, mm-hmm. no, are you, uh, what is wrong with you? You're going to, lead someone down the road for death and say, you know, hang on there. Trust in God. Uh, really? <laughs> it's not about keeping it correct, right? Forget. Let's keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about keeping it correct, you know? Let's keep well, this real. Like um, Bible Project, loving God and loving people. Is it loving mm-hmm. to give someone over to the uh, KGB knowing that the KGB is going to kill them? Is that loving? Mm-hmm. Right? No. Yeah. Not. Right. Um, so, so God's judgment falls on Jews because they fail to keep the revelation they have received. Right. They have a greater responsibility. And at the end of the the secrets, at the end of time, the secrets of all hearts will be revealed and judged according to the gospel of the righteous one, Jesus Christ. Everyone, you know, G- nothing passes Jesus. He knows everything. And on the basis of the facts the truth right mm-hmm. um so what what does he say here he says in verse three do you suppose oh man that you judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself that you will escape the judgment of god um so what are they there the gentiles was living uh, uh antithetical to god well if you're judging people and think that you're superior you're treating them antithetical to God because God doesn't treat people like that, right? You're supposed to be, as the nation of Israel, um, the the people that bring um, the nations to, to Yahweh, right? They're supposed to mm-hmm. resemble. And they're supposed to be the example. Yeah, exactly. In That's plain, the word I was looking plain, for. In yeah. plain um, terms, they were supposed to be the example. And then due to the fact that they're the chosen, they felt that they were above. And yeah. that's why as Christians, we have to be mindful of that because sometimes us, When we think, oh, I'm saved, so I'm above the fray. No, you're not. In fact, you're more in the fray because you're saved. Yes. Easily, we could get distracted and think, I'm better than that person because I serve the Lord. But if you're not spiritually evaluating yourself on a daily basis to make sure you're not living in habitual sin, Mm. you have to be careful how you walk. Well, judgment is a sin. If you are judging, let's say, and let's just put it out there, the, the, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and you say, look at those um, same-sex people and this and that, and you're judging them. Guess what? That's not what Jesus would do. All right? That's not what Jesus would do. Um, he would have 
um, love and empathy towards people, right? And, and and speak to them. There's this great book that I read. Uh, this guy who's same sex attracted. He's actually a pastor, right? And he doesn't practice homosexuality. And he wrote a book, and he says, "Guess what? Uh, every homosexual that uh, has some, um, you know, Christian background." knows all the verses don't quote verses to them if they come out to you shut your and these are my words shut your mouth and listen because they are very very um wide open right there they're very sensitive they're they're, they're naked in front of you mm -hmm. right so what would you do if somebody was wounded and and, and you know in the street with an open wound you would help them. You wouldn't quote, hey, what did you do? You know, you would, you know, that's where the love of Jesus comes. You know, if we are Christians, which we are supposed to be followers of Christ, we're supposed to be the most loving, the most empathetic towards all people, especially the ones who um, don't know Christ. And I'm not talking about the movement now. I'm talking about the individual. You know, Mitch, I, you know, along the lines of what you're talking about judgment, right? Um, we, as the church, we've already been judged, mm -hmm. right? At the foot of the cross, we were judged, right? And and so let's say judicially, we're not guilty. We weren't found guilty. Isn't Get there it. a judge? Because I, I don't really spend too much on time on eschatology, but isn't there going to be a judgment also for the Christians? Okay, there we go. And that's what I was going to mm -hmm. go to, right? That. Our works are going to be judged. Mm -hmm. See, and that's going to be that's going to be painful for a lot of us. I mean, for all of us, I think, because we didn't we we don't have this all sewed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we ask God to help us and, and 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 give us clarity of mind and and for us not to be prejudiced and not to treat others with disdain. Uh, and it's, that's hard because you know we're wired to you know culturally you know we, we're wired a certain way. And of course, the gospel breaks through all that. But yes, our 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 um, works are going to be judged. They're going to be tried. Paul talks about that yeah, as well. Right. You know, so we have to be mindful, man. We have to really try. How can I, you know? We have to be diligent in our walk with the Lord. This is not a fairy tale. You know, this is not about that I gave my tithes and I showed up on Sunday and I helped out Darby. Darby, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> or I helped out an old lady across the street. And you know, no, no, this is not about that, man. This is about really loving others, man, and loving God above all things and loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, we, we're done. We're finished, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just wanted to get to the um, <laughs> verse four, which says, or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Yes. The, the Greek word repentance, metanoia, is relatively uncommon in the Greek parlance, <laughs> fancy word. Um, the biblical usage um uh, it means to turn around, right? Yes. Metanona yes. means to recognize one's condition and do something about it, to change mm -hmm. one's mind and make a decisive turn. You're walking away from God. It's time to turn around and walk towards God, right? 360. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, 180, right? 180, 360. 180. Uh, 360 just heard it. Uh, <laughs> I, I passed you know, geography. I don't know. Like, ge <laughs> um, repentance is not um, coerced by fear or but invoked by love. You can't, um, you know, like Pastor was talking today about um, James Edward, the, 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 the famous sermon. What is it called again? The, the, um, what is the famous sermon by James? The, the, the sinners in the in the hands of a of a um, angry God or something like that. Of an angry God, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sinners you, you, in the hands of an angry God. Yeah. Yeah, you can't scare somebody into a repentance. No. Mm -hmm. Right. It's got to be done with love. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. the reason why I came, uh, um, I came back to the Lord after fourteen years of being apostate, being the prodigal son. God's love just wooed mm -hmm. me back. And, you know, I didn't want to come back and be a hypocrite. I had to be, I had to come correct, you know, and, but it was his love. 
And that verse, that verse is my verse that while we were still sinners, you know, Amen. God showed his love to us that while we were still sinners, Christ mm -hmm. died for us. Amen. So when I was doing all kind of, you know, knucklehead stuff, Jesus, like that one, uh, my blood yes. is for that one too. Mm -hmm. You know, that one, him too. Amen. All right. Amen. Um, Amen. Amen. So people are led to repent by God's goodness and patience. Right. And that's something that we should reflect that it's by our love. Even one of my favorite, um, uh, um, you know, verses by Peter, right. Um, P first Peter three fifteen. I never quote it right. I need to memorize that thing, but, um, it is, uh, the, the show them the reason why you have the hope in Jesus, but do it with gentleness and respect. Those are love words, right? Mm -hmm. Because how intense and passionate we can be and judgmental and, and it, but respect, kindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Darby. And it, it's and a perfect example of that is ushers. Um, when someone comes in through those doors, remember, oh, the church I'm is sorry. a hospital. You know, I told you I'm from the Bronx. You had me mm -hmm. like, boop, 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 boop. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking Usher. Yeah, yeah. you're right. When, when the church is a hospital and people come in injured. So we have to be mindful to train ushers properly to greet with love, not judgment. Because sometimes there's certain cultural aspects of how we grew up. What is our Christian crib, for example? Like you and I have discussed and Pastor Rick have discussed about the hat issue. Mm. If a person comes in wearing a hat in church, you shouldn't immediately tell them to take off their hat. You should immediately say, God bless you. God loves you. Where would you like to sit? But that should be it. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a Bible? Can I get you a Bible? Those are things that we should be asking someone when they first come in through those doors. Because we don't know if they grew up, meaning that they started, had a crib, a spiritual crib, or if they did not. We don't know if they grew up in church or not, what harm they've gotten in another church. So the best thing to do is to be loving and accepting. Leave yeah. them be. Come as they are. Let the Lord work with them and change them. We don't change people. The Lord does. Yeah. And it's, it's funny. Like when I was, uh, um, you know, no one told, all right, <laughs> be, I'm going to be a little, uh, um, yeah, um, what is the word? Uh, See-through. Um, transparent. Transparent. Right. <laughs> um, when I came to the Lord, uh, no one told me that you can't get money from a loan shark. Right. No one said that. You know, because, you know, sometimes I was uh, late on my bills this is when I was single and I would go to the loan shark right there. He was right at my job and you pay a little bit on the money and I was making good money. So I know to make rent. I'll be like, I just borrow some money from him and pay him the next week, whatever it is. Right. And. Um, and then I read something in the Bible. I can't remember exactly what it is, but uh, don't be a borrower or whatever. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. I can't be. And it's a word and it's God's word that convicted me. No one came and told me this stuff, right? So you're going to um, formulate God's spirit as you are willing, right? You're going to allow God's spirit to change you, right? The whole hat issue, I don't believe is biblical anyway, but, you know, like in a biblical thing, like, you know, like, you know, no one told me that, um, you know, certain things like that one barren, right? Or um, what is another one? I can't think of anything right now. Mm -hmm. But anything that you used to do, and it's not blatant, it's subtle, kind of like that, right? Mm -hmm. And God's Spirit's going to convict you. Because I, I mm -hmm. read in the Word. I was like, yeah, I'm not supposed to be doing this. So, Lord, I need you. And it's funny about this thing is that I was like, man, I'm going to be late on my rent then. And then uh, with my thing, if I'm late on my rent, I got to pay extra. And it was it was more than what I'd pay the um, loan shark. So that's why I was borrowed from the loan shark. Right. So I'm like, Lord, man. And I just felt him say, trust me, trust me. So I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. So now it's uh, Tuesday. It's Wednesday. And I'm like, Lord, Lord, it's Thursday. I'm like, uh, and I almost like Thursday at work. Uh, I mean, a uh, Friday at work. I almost I was like, man, I'm going to ask him. I was like, ah. Oh. But I didn't. I said, I'm just going to trust you. Lord. When I got home, there was a check. My state income tax check came early. Yeah. So it made my rent. I went went to the bank, got the money, right? And paid my rent. 
and it was beginning that was like early early christian mm -hmm. so that's the i i started seeing he would i i could trust him Amen. you know and i didn't know how much you know it's like a relationship right mm -hmm. like darby we me and you just met me and past we're all newbies by the way to our uh, um, circle of christ right yeah. um but we're forming relationship and in any relationship this relationship that you have the lord Yes, you heard it. he is faithful, he's trustworthy, but it, until you start experience it and you can put your weight on it, you know, like my wife, I know that she was a nice person and I could trust her, but now, you know, years into the marriage, listen, I can, I know for a fact, I don't care, nothing, you know, like I, I've experienced uh, love with my wife and, 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 and trust. So, it, so this experience that, that, you know, we need to get to. And the first part is repentance, turning around and God saying, I got you. And, you know, you stop being on fire. Don't you love being around those new Christians? They're like, they're, yes. they're like torch. Right? It's, it's contagious. Oh, yeah. Remember, if fire is, is burning hot, right? And there's enough oxygen in the room, it feeds the fire. Yeah. So when someone is, is new in spiritual fire, it, it, you just want to be near, near that person because you want that fire to come out in you as well. Um, you want to be energized. And that's why sometimes when you, when you do something like a visual and you have someone on fire, you don't want to leave because you don't want it to end. Mm -hmm. You want that continuous spiritual energy, rejuvenation, re restoration. Because sometimes, let's be honest, as you get older in Christ, sometimes we get old fogies. We become old oh, fogies. It's true. That, that we, we get so used to being in a rut that we just do things as a routine. We're not doing them. Like, for example, I'm, without mentioning names, I spoke to someone who's close to me recently. And he had told me, he says, I feel like I'm doing stuff, but I'm just doing it not when, when they ask me. Not that I'm driven to do it. So basically, if the pastor comes to you, Mitch, and says, um, can you do this for me? You'll do it, but you wouldn't normally volunteer for it. It's like, okay, the pastor asked me, so I guess I'll, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know, but if, if you wouldn't be driven to say, Pastor, I, I saw you need help with this. Can I do that for you? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the difference, you know, to be spiritually driven, yeah. to desire to do the will of God, no matter what it may be. The, if the pastor says, man, I don't have enough people to take garbage out. I'll do it. You know, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pastor, you want to say something? No, no, I'm just agreeing, agreeing. You know, we have to make ourselves available. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a beautiful well, thing. I wanted to touch on the the fire thing. The um, well, first I want to see uh, Olga. She said, "Yeah, I remember uh, when I w went to this church that uh, Olga and um, Joe were. I was uh, new in there, and they were um, they were uh, you know the husband and wife team, one of the ushers, and, and this church was uh, rather large, and there was like um, I think during the service you had like two, four, six, seven, eight probably ushers, right?" plus like three or four security, right? It was rather large. And yes, they were, she was, one thing about Olga, that smile that you see, she's had it since then. I don't think I've ever seen Olga mad, <laughs> right? Or, or, or sad. I mean, she probably has been, but I've never seen it. Like, you know, she, and it's it's just natural. You know, it's not fake. You can tell when people are faking it. Yeah. But um, yeah. uh, when, when people are on fire, and that's why it, it I... I try and stay on, um, not that I stay on fire, but it's your proximity to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you're going to be near that uh, for my old, old friends, um, Shekinah glory, right? <laughs> I just like saying that, um, <laughs> <laughs> right? But you're going to be closer and closer that, you know, like, um, and, and it's up to the individual. You can't put it on God. God, I need you to do this for me. Make me like this. And God's like, hey, hey I'm right over here. Come. I need you to come over here. Mm -hmm. I need you to come to me. I need you. Uh, my word is there. I need you to come so we can reason together. We can uh, flesh it out so we can talk. Mm -hmm. I can. You can see the way I, I poured into people's lives. I need you in those times of quality time, just me and you, and sometimes in silence, sometimes you with petitions, sometimes you just praising. I need you. You you want to you want me to change you? Well, you need to do these things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, this is what's going to change you. My spirit's going to change you as you come into my presence. If, if you're not coming into my presence, 
How am I going to change you? You're mm-hmm. supposed to be my child. Can you imagine there's a little child? We're, right? We have children, right? A little child, and they never sit on daddy's lap? Never? No, I want to sit on my father's lap. I want to be there and I want to be, I'm, I'm in this word. I'm, I'm reading, I'm asking him to guide me. When we set up this thing, I'm asking him to be here. I can't do it. You know, I, I'm, I'm a, sorry, I'm an idiot. All right. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not college grad. I am, listen, everything that I say, I regurgitate from people that are smarter than me. Right. Mm-hmm. I just have the common sense to know that, hey, I should know some of this stuff that they know. And I want to relay that to you guys so you would know. So maybe you relay that to the people, you know, so they know. Right? And Mitch, and even God makes that offer. Mm-hmm. Like you said before, he tells uh, uh, Judah uh, in the book of Isaiah, come, let us reason. Yeah. Come on. Let's let, let's sit down. Let's, let's talk. Mm-hmm. Let's have that cup of coffee. I mean, you know, yeah. yeah, I'm just, you know, well, metaphor, no. you know, metaphor. Uh, you know. I don't think God drinks yeah, coffee, I but I drink his coffee for him. <laughs> yeah. All right. you know? but, but so so God does call us uh, to to sit at the table with him. Mm-hmm. He gives everybody a chance, man, mm-hmm. regardless of where we came from, where we've been, you know. Uh, and he says, come on, let's, but, yeah, and of course, you know, we have to go to the source. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 let's 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 have that conversation like we're having now. Mm-hmm. And and Paul is the one having that conversation in the book of Romans. He's calling Jews and Gentiles, mm-hmm. you know, on behalf yeah. of the Lord. Let's have that conversation. Okay, you're not born into this. You know, people think I'm born in. You know, you're not. Nope. This is not, you know, this is not uh, uh, uh you know, people and folk, you know. <laughs> you're not born <laughs> in. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have to come by way of the cross, you know, you have to come through Christ. Mm-hmm. And um, and so our past laurels, we have to forget about them. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, you know what can we do to obtain obtain salvation? Oh, I, li- I like that. Gary said we always have to continue to put the log on the fire for our faith to continue to burn. Amen. Like, Amen. I'm Amen. stealing that. All right. I'm Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We we gotta put in an effort, people, because you know mm-hmm. what? There's a lot of Christians who are not growing because they're not putting the effort. Yes. And that includes picking up God's word. That includes Amen. Amen. going to a, a seminary to mm-hmm. continue to grow in God's word. Like, let's say you don't have to go to, to New York Theological, but you could go somewhere that's smaller that you could get more um, knowledge of God's word and how to study God's word. Inductive um, studying. Go ahead. I'm sorry, man. No, no, no. It's uh, no, I want that. The hand is so when you're done, I just want to speak. Go on. Go and, on. And, 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 and Darby, Darby, I'm sorry. And just along the lines of what you say, and we have to incarnate this. Mm-hmm. This word has to come to life inside of us, Amen. so we have to live it as well, right? We have to. Live oh it. yeah, Amen. it has to be lived. Amen. Amen. How, Amen. But th- this is what I try and say: the, How are you going to live the word if you don't know the word? Exactly. Right? Exactly. How are you going to be moved by the Spirit if you don't spend time with the Spirit? Amen. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You're just going on your 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 conversion, mm-hmm. you're going on old food, mm-hmm. right? Right? You're right. you're. That fire that was burning, you're still remembering when you was on fire, mm-hmm. right? And and it's it's time for you to, uh, I would love to go to seminary. I don't have the funds for that. And plus, I, I think, you know, that's why I'm so glad Gary's doing this thing. Um, but I read, a, um, I saw actually an interview and he said back in the, you know, I think the first um, university was in Cologne, um, France or something like that like 10 AD, I mean, you know, uh, 10, 10 AD or something like that. I can't remember exact date, but way back then. And he said, university started because that's where the books were. That's where the writings were. Remember, everything was scribal back then until the printing mm-hmm. press, right? So he says, nowadays, you have the ability to go and search out anything. And he wasn't talking about Christianity. He was just talking about educating yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, so I went and got books. I can't remember the exact, I wish I want God to bring to remembrance what the first book was. I can't remember it, but I know one of the first books was Frank Turek's. So you, uh, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. And from mm-hmm. there, uh, more books came from the bibliography and the stuff he referenced to. And then I wanted to find out about a, this subject, uh, 
Where do we get denominations? I read books on church history. I wanted to know about Calvinism. So I read on both sides, for Calvinism, against Calvinism. I wanted to know about uh, eschatology. I read books about... So I am well-versed in a number of things, but it is a process. It started back in 2013. In the beginning, I had a book and a dictionary because most of the books on the page, I didn't know what they said. Mm. You know, it wasn't nice, easy ones. Like I'm used to, and I'm sorry for the reference. I'm used to Cat in the Hat. I know he's uh, um, been canceled, but I that's my type of book that I could read. Mm -hmm. And now they're using stuff like, uh, um, you know, empirical. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you know, I see <laughs> empire in there. Maybe it has something to do with the Yankees, but it didn't, you know, that's a joke. Um, I know they go quick over the head, uh, but it is a process. And what happens is just like everyone, no one came out of the womb, right? Start running. Mm -hmm. We all crawled and then we started walking and we fell a few times and then we started walking good. And then we started running and now we take it for granted, right? Mm -hmm. And I just encouraging everyone listening and everyone that's going to see this, listen, you don't have to be a Bible scholar, but you can be educated mm -hmm. in certain things. And if I could tell you one, um, one genre, one, one um, part to be educated on, and that's the deity of Jesus, because that is the thing that separates from all other religions including non-religions like postmodernism <laughs> and everything else the deity of jesus and it is provable it is real amen amen jesus is real i was um i wanted to mention this before but we started late because i was running around all day and usually we get we discuss before we uh, see you wonderful people but i was wondering during easter easter's coming up uh, or resurrection sunday uh, certain people don't like I say Easter. It's a pagan holiday. It's like, yeah, you know what I mean, you know? Um, so Resurrection Sunday coming around. What if we took a little um, pause on Romans and that one, uh, the Wednesday before Resurrection Sunday, we talk about the deity of Jesus. Well, what do you think uh, online? Um, give us a, your, your, your um, you know. Your, Just a thumbs up. <laughs> I know you guys are, well, what if everyone, you know, so we'll look back and, and that's find good. Out. That's good. Yeah, that's good. You know, because I think that's necessary. YouTube, there's certain people on YouTube that you can, like, I'll tell you, Frank Turek, uh, Jay Warner Wallace, uh, um, uh, what's your Lee Strobel, uh, Sean McDowell, um, uh, what's your, I know I'm leaving out a whole bunch of Mike Winger, um, uh, Dr. Michael Brown, Michael Heiser. They can all pour. John McCarthy. Who? John. <laughs> Actually, some of the stuff. Yeah. You know, no, some of the stuff yeah just stay away from uh, anything charismatic. But yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> He's not canceled. Some of his stuff is still good. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. stay away from anything current yeah. on the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. Gary said in the Bill Karishi. That's actually a very good book. And, and his stuff, because he's always, he's, he came out of Islam and the deity of Jesus right there is very good. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby yeah, just yeah. put up the school the, of the Bible. Believe, you know, believe classes start right now. Really? Online. Oh, yeah. They, they, they're on the second spring section session right now. Yeah. But they, do they charge you or can a pretty face just, uh, they charge you, but the classes are 80 bucks. I think they're less now because they're going online because of the pandemic. And the more classes you take, the cheaper it gets. Because as you add classes, they keep taking like 10, 20 bucks off. Well, free is me. And it's always, <laughs> you know, anyway. Um, um, I, I think we're going to pause here. It is yeah. late. And either we talk a lot or we talk a lot. Um, <laughs> so we're going to halt here. We did one to four. It's the... The, Paul's beginning argument against the, his own um, countrymen about why they shouldn't be thumbing their noses at the Gentile believers or the Gentile nation, you know, Gentiles in general. And uh, so we're going to pause here. We're going to pick up from here, verse five, and see if we can go all the way to verse 16. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll see. I think it's a blessing. I hope so. I hope everyone here is blessed and, and, um encouraged um we thank you for you know your wednesday night staying with us 
Uh, Darby, Pastor Rick, you want to say anything? No, um, study to show thyself worthy. I mean, I'm sorry, study to show <laughs> thyself approved. Yes. All right, <laughs> Second Timothy two fifteen. Right there, you go. Uh, Darby, you want to say anything? Yeah, um, thank you for joining us. Keep joining us. If there's any questions, we're always on Facebook as well to read any questions that may come along. Please feel free to ask questions because that's what we're here for. Um, we're not just sharing knowledge, but we're also learning from each other. Um, it, uh, none of us came knowing everything. At a no. certain point, um, we all have to learn and we're always learning. You know, learning doesn't stop until the day you're in heaven. So don't ever think that, you know, um, we know so much. This is an ongoing process, continuous, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, being devoted to God's word um, and hunger for God's word. And we should all be on fire like that to be hungry for God's word, to know more about God. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Uh, I'm going to close us in prayer. And I would like, um, there is a, I'm going to see if I can find it. The, or you could just Google it. There's a, Google the prayers of Paul. It's wonderful. You know, it's, um, it I've is. Been, the, and it's all the Bible. It's the New Testament. So I'm going to mm -hmm. try and use one of the prayers off the head, right? Um, and pray us out. Um, I uh, I think I think the the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, and I pray that He give everyone the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened, that we may know. What is the hope to which he has called us? And what are the riches of his glorious yes, inheritance in the saints? That is us. That is the innumerable greatness of his power toward all of us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above. And, and I'm going to just continue in verse chapter th um, three. And for this reason, we bow our knees to the father from whom every family in, yes. in heaven yes. and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant us to be strengthened with power through his spirit Amen. in our inner being that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that we being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all of those who believe what is the breadth, the length, Amen. the height and depth to know the love of Christ that surpasses, surpasses knowledge that we, may, we be filled with all the fullness of God. So we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And I also posted a link on a free university, which is from our Daily Bread University on the link there. Oh, I used to do that. I, that's yeah. pretty good. No, that, that's pretty good stuff, the Daily Bread yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. Um, God bless you all. And we uh, um, love you. And we'll see you next week on CCC TV. This is the, um, what are we called again? The Circle of Christ 3, <laughs> right? Yes. On Facebook Live. Amen. Amen. I thought it was terrible trees, but it's not, not terrible trees. We're, we're good now. All right. We used to be. By the everyone. grace of God, we've been cleansed by Amen. Amen. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.